Right Networks helps you securely transition your accounting-based desktop applications into the cloud, regardless of which version you're using. As a partner, you can trust Right Networks will take away the burden of IT so you have more time to focus on your business, more time to drive your profitability. And this makes keeping close track of your finances and operations so much easier. Work from anywhere, anytime with your favorite desktop applications. The Right Network's support team is there around the clock waiting for you. How do you get hold of them? It's real simple. Go to rightnetworks.com. That's R-I-G-H-T, networks.com. Or if you want to do it old school, pick up the phone. Dial 888-417-4448, dial extension 1. Tell them that Ron and Mike sent you over. All right, Ron, now it's time to kick things off, baby. And today, right here, right now, this is the moment that you will finally say, I'm growing my accounting practice! Episode 112. Here we go, baby. Wow. Awesome. And welcome, everyone. I'm Ron Saharian, co-founder of Profit First Professionals. And I'm Mike Michalowicz, the author of Profit First. I want to welcome you to my favorite podcast. It's called GMAP. It stands for Grow My Accounting Practice. And this is a show where we teach you the step-by-step how to grow your bookkeeping or accounting practice. And we give it to you from vantage points, sometimes that you never expected. This is going to happen today. Oh, that ain't just it. We also give you the one task that if you do it today, you will see a result in your business. It's called the GMAP Now Task. Plus, we give you the psychology of the sale. All that coupled with our great interview guests. So that's like plus, plus, great guest plus. Interview. So, right. yeah. And of course, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, and of course, GrowMyAccountingPractice.com. Yep. And um, well, let me give you a little hint we're going to be talking about in today's episode. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine, Ryan, could you imagine if you actually tested your clients before they became clients? Like literally gave them a battery of tests to make sure they're a perfect fit for you. Not, not an interview, but a test. A test. Right. Do you think they would do it? If it's not, I don't know. Maybe. You're about to find out. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, and well, first of all, uh, Annette Wright does do this to her clients. They love doing the test. They enjoy the engagement and involvement. Involvement, and she gets better clients as a result. So you're going to discover that. Now we're going to get to that in just a minute. Um, first, I want to do a couple more things. Uh, I want to do a little unexpected shout out to mm-hmm. our former lacrosse coach. Oh yes, thank you. You shared the news. So you wanted to share a little details to our listeners. Yeah, it's um, it's with a heavy heart that. Um, Mike and ours and our local community here in uh, Booton, New Jersey, lost one of the all-time greats, uh, Coach uh, Risk, Dick Risk. Mm-hmm. Um, not only was he a family friend, but he also was my coach in high school, your coach in high school, as well as uh, my coach in college. So it, it, it's with a heavy heart that uh, all of us in the Booton lacrosse community, um, you know, are, it's weighing on of us. I mean, here's a gentleman who brought um, – lacrosse to the state of New Jersey, yeah. in essence. Uh, Booton, a small little town here, uh, we've had our lacrosse program for over 50 years. Yeah. And it's a really strong alumni community, and every year it's great to see uh, generation after generation after generation. So um, we're all going to miss you, Coach, and uh, you know we know you're in a better place now. Yeah, yeah, a huge shout-out to you, Coach Risk. We miss you. We love you. I think you're listening to the show. He may be even having a yeah, he's, he's listening now, to the show, calling yeah. me an effing asshole. Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Saharian <laughs> Michalowicz, jeez. Get off your ass. You two clowns, just get to work. <laughs> no, he was a phenomenal guy. Great and, guy. you know, the nice thing was the last alumni game that we've had, hopefully mm-hmm. they'll have it again, he was able to make it to the game and, right. and watch the game. Right. Uh, I think uh, I scored a goal. Did you score a goal that game? No, but I beat in face off. Oh, you, <laughs> that's right. I was I was shocked. Don't be shocked. I was shocked. I did not expect that at all. I was, I was, I was too cocky. Right. All right. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Back to the business. If you want to get free access to our monthly webinars, something we used to charge for, we only give free access to our members. We've decided to open it up because it's just too good not to give to the entire accounting and bookkeeping community. You can get for free now, but you do have to take the first step. Send a text, GMAP is the word, G-M-A-P, to 678-506-7543. Again, that's GMAP to 678-506-7543. And uh, we'll get you on our free webinars. 
And uh, one more thing. I do want to thank our corporate partners before we kick the show off, Ron. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do the honors? Absolutely. Well, let's start oh off with a my. big thank you to Right Networks. Oh, my. Receipt Bank. <laughs> Next Tiva. Oh, my. And, of course, a fun box. Yeah, so now we got our Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. And we'll be sharing a little bit more about these uh, great companies later on in the show. Talking about a great company, I went out to breakfast and met with Annette Wright. Now, we hadn't met before. Mm -hmm. uh, I was speaking at a conference in Colorado a couple Fridays back. Right. And I sit down, and I meet, um, there's like four or five entrepreneurs at the table, and Annette Wright instantly catches my attention. Just calm, cool, collected, and sharing story after story. That this, It's a type of thing, like, like, you just hear the story, and it's the biggest punch to the face said with the softest words, right? I'm like, oh, my God. I think I'm sitting next to a genius. So I, you know, I do my thing. I pull out my phone. I start taking notes down, and um, I grabbed it a little bit later. And said, "Net, I got it. I got to interview you for GMAP." And she's like, "Yeah, no problem." Why do I have to interview her? Well, she's figured out a formula to interview clients to test them before they come on board. She's the founder of OD Interiors. It's found back in 2009 and is in Mainline Philadelphia, beautiful part of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And she's an uh, interior designer. Uh, she does. She has an interior design studio and does projects all throughout Philadelphia and also the tri-state area up here in New Jersey and where we are. A couple of things you may not know about uh, Annette, uh, that she is an accomplished interior designer and that she is known for her extraordinary listening skills. Ironically, today you're going to find out how good she presents, but she's also a great listener. So What? Yeah. yeah you're not listening to me. <laughs> Annette, welcome to the show. Welcome, Annette. Hi, guys. I'm Mike Byron. So, Annette, you must have, when you go to a customer and say, hey, let's start off this relationship with a test, <laughs> I don't know how that would be received by other people, but for me, that would throw me off kilter. It does a little bit, but I make it very, I lighten it up. I start laughing. I'm like, yeah, and if, you know, you don't pass, you get kicked out immediately. So they know, of course, <laughs> because, of course, I want their business, hopefully, if they're the right client. But it's they react a little bit in shock, but I lighten it up for them and let them know it's nothing pass or fail. Okay, so so what is the concept of this test? What, what are you testing them about? I'm basically testing them or trying to find out more about their personality traits. And the reason why I do this is because I use it as a tool so if we decide it is a good fit for the job, that I know exactly the way that they think, the way that they process information, the way that they, um, you know, uh, the way that they work and how they think. So that helps me respond a little bit more in the way that they're thinking versus the way that I'm thinking everything should go. And it just makes the relationship and, you know, go more smoothly. Yeah, it's funny. I read a book uh, years ago and I laud the power of this book on communication. It was called the five love languages. Mm -hmm. My wife and I discovered this book and found that when I make an effort to communicate in my wife's language, so to speak, even if it's, even if it's a little bit awkward for me, it resonates with her and vice versa. Absolutely. Do you find that by doing these personality tests that you have the ability or the, at least the looking glass to see how your customers need to be communicated with? Absolutely. And you, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly the concept of the test that I give, because for instance, there's uh, four different colors, red, blue, uh, green and yellow. And, you know, just to tell one thing about yellows, usually someone with yellow personality trait, they really like to be led. They like, they actually like to be commu in communication with reds who are very strong. So if I have a client and I did, I had a client who really couldn't make decisions. They were very indecisive, but as a red, well, I'm a blue, but I'm a blue red, but you know, with a personality trait with a red, I said, you know what? She really wants me to really push her and help her to make this decision. And that's really where her comfort zone is. So in doing that, she was able to, you know, I said, listen, these are really your, your choices here. I think this is the best one. And this is the reason why I think you should go with this. Now I probably wouldn't do that to another red because they may resist. I would suggest it in a different way, but it really helps you help them along in, in the way that they're thinking or decision-making, even though it might be a little bit awkward because I'm not really a bully, but sometimes I have to use a little bullying tactics for them to make decisions. What, what's the test you use? Is it a uh, public software or what is it? No, it's actually from, um, I found this test actually, it's an author, his name is Jacob Adamo, and he wrote this great book called Full Spectrum Success. And it is actually geared towards 
Um, you can use it personally, but it's very much geared towards businesses, small businesses and building your teams. And not only do I use the test for my clients, but I actually use the test for people that I interview to be employed here. Because, you know, in team building, we all have to work together, you know, a lot of hours of the day. And it's best to know how each of us are working, you know, the strengths, the weaknesses, and, you know, just to, to build that synergy amongst our team. So it's Jacob Adamo, Full Spectrum Success. You can actually get it on Amazon Kindle or just order it from Amazon. It's not one of these really thick reference books that nobody has time to read. Very simple, simplistic, and you'll be surprised at some of the, the um, explanations of the color personalities, how it really hits home. And that's what I really have found success with my clients and when they really get into it because when I tell them what their personality color is, Nine times out of 10, they're like, oh my gosh, that is so me. That's so my wife. That's so true. So now they feel very comfortable that I understand them. So it makes my job a lot easier. But yeah, you can get it on Amazon, anything. Can you walk us through the colors? Like you said, there's red, blue, green, yellow. Sure. What does each color mean? Um, there's very long explanations for a couple, well, not long, but longer than probably I could read to you today. But red... <sighs> There's just a certain trait. Reds, they are, that's a very strong color. People who are solid reds, they have a very strong personality. They're confident. They love challenges. They're driven by strong desire to win. They consider themselves to, be, to belong to society's elite. And I have to say, with each color, there are shades. There's a typical shade. There's a, a troublesome shade. And there's a truth shade, which we all find in just normal, you know, evaluation of people in life. We all have our good side, our bad side, and our very, you know, calm side. So there's there's the good, the bad, and the ugly about every color, but what we all try to attain is our true shade, which is the most positive color. But red, they're strong. Blue, which I am primarily a blue, very creative. Um, they say we tend to act without thought of consequences, but people love to be around us because we make a really good time. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm creative. Ron, can, Ron, I think Ron's a red. I'm a blue. It sounds like we got the Democrat. We got the Democratic and Republican <laughs> Party here. So okay, so creative. Um, what else is? How else green, is green. Oh, green, green. Oh, green. The greens. They're highly analytical thinkers. Problem solvers. Um, they need to follow detailed plans in order to function. Greens can also, when they're troublesome shade, they can also kind of be in a box where they can't really get out. They, if they don't follow a certain structure, they like their heads blow off, you know, things like that. <laughs> but they can mm -hmm. be very structured. But then again, greens, you always want to green on your team because they have the organizational thing down. So you really mm -hmm. always want to green on your team. Or, you know, with a client, if you have a green as a client, you better make sure you have your organizational thing down because they are going to be on your phone and your email checking on you every day to make sure everything is going as planned. Um, the yellows, yeah, yellow. yellows, they're kind of emotional. They avoid conflict, but they're friendly, loyal. They usually are the people who can draw a group together. They're, you know, they're very team oriented. They're very sensitive. So they're also, that's also a color that, you know, if you're building this um, with this personality test, a, a team for your business, you know, they're really good to have on your team because they kind of, you know, center everyone. But as a client, sometimes, you know, the troublesome part of a yellow, they're very indecisive. They can be indecisive. So you have to really learn how to work with a person like that and make them feel comfortable with making decisions. And it's okay to, you know, take a leap outside of, you know, your box. So it, it is, it's just very good. I found it so valuable. My clients love taking this test once I explain to them what it means, especially couples. They just think it's so funny, and they're like, oh, my gosh, yes, that's him. That's my husband, or that's her, that's my wife. So it's very valuable to my business. And, and what, what would be an, an example of a question that would, you know, determine the color? Well, the questions actually, it's they're all descriptions. So they're not really formed as questions. It's about um, – it's a questionnaire of about – I said it's not questions, but they're descriptions – about 15 mm -hmm. descriptions and 15 line items. And out of four descriptions, you have to choose what best and most honestly describes you, describes your personality. And you can only choose one. It can't be two. It can't be 
you know, nothing applies to me. If you don't think it applies, you have to choose. If you, at somebody, you know, holding you a gunpoint, you have to make a choice. You have to choose one description out of the one line item. And then what I do is at the end, you just tally up a score. And then how they score in each color category, that's their strongest color personality. And you can have a hybrid of color. You can be a blue-green or a blue-red, but there is one um, there is really one main color. But I do have to say, I actually did test someone who was even in all of the colors. They got the same score in all of the colors, which was really odd. So we had to, <laughs> yeah. we had to contact Jacob and actually ask him. And they said, you know what? That's a very well-rounded person. So they're probably going to be a really great client or a great employee because it really, they really have, they have a piece of every color. So that was pretty interesting. That is. So I presume customers receive this actually well because you, you gave a little insight there, Annette. You said when uh, customers are doing this test, they're getting insights themselves. Yes. So, so, do, so clearly you're giving them the results of their own test. Absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes it's good because then they can find themselves when we may be having a challenge in a, in a decision and they say, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm in my box. You know, I guess, what am I in that? A green? Yes, I'm in a box. Okay, that's fine. Let's just do it. Let's, I'm going to get out of my comfort zone and just do it. So they often find themselves, you know, in that test for, you know, making their own, you know, identity, <laughs> identification, I guess. Now, you're in the design industry, and clearly the dialogue with the customers is very important because there's a creative art being done here. You're, you're changing someone's physical space. Yes. You know, our listeners are accountants and bookkeepers. It's a very analytical driven space. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the numbers. Do you, how do you tell customers you're going to do this test? And do you believe that a personality test translates to more than just the creative space or maybe not? Um, I actually, well, your first question, how do I tell them? I just say it. I mean, I just get it right out because they're already, Honestly, one of the biggest, I, what I've read in studies, one of the biggest fears that people have that of interior designers is that they're not going to listen. And so immediately I just tell them, I say, hey, I'm going to give you a test. And, you know, I make the little joke about kicking them out. But I said, but you know what? This test will, is actually a tool that I use to help me better understand and better listen to what your needs really are. Because Mm. People always say that they're like, you know, I always think interior designers are going to come in and just take over and I really won't have any say. And with that realization, that's one of the reasons why I think this test is so great, too, because they really do understand that it's about them. It's not about me. And I need to listen and I need to understand to what their needs are, because this is a very personal thing. Um, and also, I think that can translate into any business, especially, you know, dealing with numbers and accounting. Now you want to talk about something daunting to, you know, the lay person who doesn't deal with numbers, who's not in an accounting practice. They really want to have a sense that you understand because we're looking at it from the side of our businesses, not just the numbers. And if, if they can get an idea of how you think, it might help better to understand why we made certain decisions or they're looking at our files and you can't understand what the heck I've done. And but you say, oh, you know what? I can see them doing that because they kind of think like a blue or they think like a red. And maybe that's what they were trying to get done here. And you can kind of straighten out challenges and issues because you're understanding how a person operates. It's not, you know, it's not just a space. It's not just a number. It's a person. It's an actual person behind all of that. Yeah. And, and communication is key, right? Yeah. In any industry, Absolutely. maybe even more so in accounting and bookkeeping because it's very visceral when the accountant or the client sees numbers they don't want to see, yes. right. you know, they can get anxious. Well, you know, and, and there's a huge um, issue out there that the creative folks have been saying for many years, which is my accountant doesn't get me. Mm. They don't understand. They don't. It, yeah. Right. Right. Because because accountants, you know, when I was going through these colors with you, I'm like, oh, my God, they're so green. Isn't that funny? Like green's the color of money, at least in the U.S. And they're analytical. They're structured. Right. Right. Uh, but they're communicating with more traditional entrepreneurs, which are reds, 
a combination of reds and blues more, I think. I mean, think think about the, the service differentiator if you are primarily working with creatives, that you're oh. able to, you know, do this type of analysis with them. They're going to be floored by it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that would be amazing um, for someone to take that on because I know being a creative, you know, the accounting – portion is always just so daunting to me. But if I actually right. had someone who would just, I felt like, well, he's actually trying to understand my business in the way I think and the, why I do this crazy stuff that I do that I'm not supposed to, but that he, someone's actually trying to tune in to understand your business better. And with that, they have to understand the person behind the business a little bit better. So my jaw basically dropped. We're, we're eating breakfast together. I like six servings of eggs, and that's like, what is going on here? Like, an oatmeal. An oatmeal. Amazing. I'm like, I'm like, Annette, I run and work out like relentlessly, and my meta- and I'm hyper. So my metabolism, <laughs> I just, I gotta keep eating. If I don't eat, I'm, I'm dead. I saw it first. Um, you saw it firsthand, right? Oh, man, running across that room, one end to the other. I was tired watching you. <laughs> Jeez. Oh yeah, at the event itself, I, I, I ran, and I actually had a foot cramp. I was actually struggling to run. That was, so that was not top speed, but um. My jaw dropped and some eggs fell out. You when, do look funny when you run, though. I do. You but still haven't learned. I have how a to run weird right. gait, but I can run fast. <laughs> right. Awkwardly. Awkwardly. <laughs> so, Annette, you um, you were sharing a story about you went to a meeting. It was a husband and wife uh, looking to redesign the room. And in my mind, I picture okay, now I have this client where it's a partnership. It's a husband and wife or two business partners like Ron and me. And the wife, arms open, loves what you're doing. Engage as heck, husband, arms crossed, foot tapping on the floor, really not intrigued, but you're able to navigate around that. Tell us that story of how you use kind of these colors to break through with that relationship. Well, I knew um, he was very much a red, and he was, you know, a successful business owner of a family business, and um, she was much more of a blue, creative, very open, sort of fly by the seat of her pants, you know, whatever makes me happy, I'll let you know and let's keep it moving. So I knew that he was going to be the nut to crack uh, because he was just very skeptical that, you know, the investment that she wanted to make into the design of their already beautiful home, whether it was really going to be worth it and if I could actually do something that he hadn't seen because he's very well traveled as well. And so I, I really kind of zeroed in without, you know, discounting what was important to her. I make, you know, very clear lists of my evaluation as I'm going through the, the as we call it, the, um, you know, the interview process. So right. he just kind of, you know, once I got to the presentation, I was like, this is what he's looking for. And I know in his color, I have to really get him. So once we got to the presentation and I knew that I had pulled in a lot of the elements that were important to him and especially things that I felt like he had not seen or experienced before, but it was right in the wheelhouse of how he described he wanted their their space and their environment to be. So he's sitting there with his arms crossed, you know, like, oh my gosh, when is this going to be over? And as soon as I turned, because for them, I actually used uh, a design board, a physical design board, not something online. And once I turned the board around and he saw what the presentation was, immediately the arms uncrossed, the elbows went on the knees, the hand, the chin went on the hands, and he was intently studying this design. And I was like, I got you. I said that internally, not outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you, baby. I got I you. Get that checkbook out. <laughs> and it was a but really we- great experience because it wasn't just about me doing a great design, which it was, but... I knew I had listened to what he yeah. told me. I knew I had listened to what she told me. And then I also work with them within their color personality so they can understand, you know, the process. And the final presentation, he, he said to me, he said, you know what I have to say? I'm floored. This is really great. And I was just like, oh, ah! you know. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's, it's almost like. You're, you're getting the answers to the test. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We actually have a recording. I don't know, uh, Annette, if you knew this. We had our recorder down there. When uh, when you presented that sheet, that, that design, uh-huh. uh, we got him on tape. Here's his response. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> that was him. Oh, my gosh. That was him. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Now, 
so you were able to speak to his wants, but really it wasn't that design alone. That was the end deliverable. Right. It was the fact you were listening to him and also knew his color in advance and were able to design to his desires and her desires, right? Yeah, it's a good feeling. Yeah, it's a good feeling to be able to, like you said, have the, hey, have the answers to the test before it's over. <laughs> it's a great feeling. Yeah, to know that you're... that's a good analogy. Yeah. Absolutely. Now tell me, you've also been able to translate this to your employees, and we were talking about, uh, you know, at breakfast, how you're you're really getting quality employees. Tell us how you use this with your colleagues and get great talent on board. Well, I also um, just besides the questionnaire for that particular. Um, job description, whether it's design assistant or administrative assistant or, you know, design director, things like that. There are questions that speak to just, you know, the skill set, which you obviously need, you know, personality test is not going to give you whether this person has that type of skill. But what it does do is let you know what type of person you have on your team and, and whether they can fulfill that role as you see it. I need my administrative assistant to be very strong to be very motivated, a self-starter. So if I'm interviewing someone who is a color where that is a challenge in their troublesome shade, you know, I'm going to really evaluate that. Now, if their skill set is kind of out the roof, there may be kind of some exception I might take to certain things. But clearly, if I'm talking about someone who is a really strong yellow, who has a problem making decisions, they won't be a fit for a certain position. So I won't hire a person in that position. I actually interviewed one person and they were clearly just a strong, strong, strong yellow. But it's, it, you know, it was terrible because I felt bad because they had such enthusiasm for the position and they really, you know, felt like they could, you know, do well, but it wasn't going to be a good fit because at the end of the day, I have to make sure when I'm running out of here at 100 miles an hour to a client, I, they, they can hold down the fort back here when, when I'm not around, you know, so I'm trying to get one, I'm trying to get a piece of every color, you know, a green to really be structured. Um, I have a yellow, I have a red, I have a blue. So I'm, I'm getting there to the perfect, you know, color personality circle because everybody has a, a true in their shade that is a very valuable asset to any business. Now, Annette, you, you mentioned that um, you, you, you interviewed that lady. She was very passionate about it. She right. wanted the job, but you knew, uh, based upon the findings of the, the, the report, that she wasn't right. Did you ever not follow it and say, you know what? Let so me, I was thinking. Let, let me I was thinking the exact this, same thing. You know, be, they're be, you're being sold on the interview. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Did I ever not follow it? Honestly. And hired somebody, and they're like, uh, the report was right. <laughs> um, no. Actually, no. I haven't. Uh, I, I, I actually have it. I can't say that I have. Now, I ha I've i still gotten a dud or two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I Not know whether they, they took um, some, some, some golden seal to suppress the, the color that I didn't want to see, but it was just <laughs> kind of like... Wow, where did that come from? But that's that's the thing. You know, it's not an exact science, but it is a great tool. You know, people come in, you come into an interview one day, you're dressed one way, you talk another way, come into a second interview a month later, you might have had some serious personal issues going on and your whole demeanor and everything that you're thinking is different. So it's not going to say that I'm not going to, you know, it's going to give me the right person all of the time. But I'm pretty confident that it has, has been pretty accurate in, in leading me down the path where I think, you know, I'm making a good decision about this person. So I, I haven't I haven't done that and, and, and went astray now. <laughs> so we've, we've talked about interviewing your clients. I love it. You can communicate better. We've talked about interviewing your employee. What about or interviewing, testing your employees? What about testing yourself? Have you found advantages of knowing your own color? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, in fact, after I, after I give the test to my clients and to my employees, I talk to them about what color I am. And I talked to, I said, this is how I process information. This is my, my personality color. This is the way I think. And I'm a, I'm a pretty true blue. My next color is red. 
but my blue is so strong it almost outshines red. But I absolutely know myself within my color and even as I'm making decisions and if I'm having like a really screwy day and I'm like why is everything going wrong and I'm like oh okay because I'm doing it this way because that's my color personality I need to tap into something else because that's in my troublesome shade and I really shouldn't be reaching for that in my you know in this day because it's really turning into crap so um, yeah, it absolutely helps me a lot to understand myself better and for my employees and my clients to understand me as well. So I was poking around the internet while we're talking and I found the full spectrum test. Mm -hmm. It looks, maybe I misunderstand this, but Annette, it looks like it's available for free. Oh yeah. I believe it's available for free on Jacob's website, but it's a whole book that you really do need to read. Um, to get more insight because you will get, you, you'll get, I think a little summary of the colors, but it's really great and insightful to read just the whole, the whole, the, the full spectrum of the personality colors and how you can use it within your business and your personal life. So there's more to it, but yeah, they kind of let you take the test online, I believe for free. Yeah. So it's what it looks like. Cause it says you take this test and it'll come out with the full personality palette. Take it. I, I will, but uh, yeah, I'll, we both have to take it. I'm not taking it. <laughs> it gives our full personality palette. Yeah. And then, so you can do these tests with your clients for free. And then I'm hearing you just need the book to interpret what you found. Yes. And does it, do people, by the way, you find when you're, you're working with clients, do they ever bounce around between colors? I mean, is there ever inconsistencies or is this kind of tried and true from your experience? I mean, I definitely think, I probably wouldn't call them inconsistencies, but I definitely think they can bounce around from color to color. Because like I think Jacob has actually come out with a subsequent book that talks about the hybrid of colors. How you can be more than one color. You may be one color very strong, but you have another color in there too, swirling around. So um, it's more or less... When, when a client kind of does something out of the character of what I'm understanding what their color is, then I actually go back to, because I keep their results in their file, and I will go back to the file and say, oh, that's right. They were a nine in red, but they are, are an eight in yellow. So that will come to the surface very quickly when they're doing something a little bit out of character of what I'm expecting with the red. I'm like, oh, their yellow's coming. Okay. And they have a red-headed uh, child. <laughs> Orange-headed child. There you go. <laughs> or maybe green-headed. Yes. Have you found, um, as you've been doing this, different results than – actually, let me re re scratch that. Was there a time that you didn't do this in your business, that yeah. you didn't test people? Yes, there was. There was absolutely okay. Fun. Okay, and that's what I wanted to now know is the comparative. Have you found that since you've been doing this that – you are better able to serve your clients the way they need to be served, AKA make your business more profitable. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you can anticipate, when you can anticipate needs and, and desires and visions and even, you know, attitudes and why someone is, you know, responding in a way that may be even negative, it, it helps you kind of head those things off. And, you know, again, back to having the answers of, of the test before you finish the test, it really translates into more success, a more successful relationship and interior design that translates into a successful project and a successful project translates into getting paid for it <laughs> and happily getting paid for it and then referring you to other clients and to basically about the experience, you know? And so it just, it, it adds to everything it just on one on top of the other really translates into just a better more successful smooth project and people just really want to know that you listen because you're coming into their very personal space and environment and they don't want to just you know write you a check and they're like well, that that sucked but you know but right. <laughs> it absolutely does i've definitely seen a difference even in the way that i can structure my day and my business because i know what i'm dealing with have people flat out refused to take the test? No, absolutely not. That's great. When do you take? The, when do you tell your customers to take the test? Do you, you wait till there's a check in hand and say, "Okay, now you're engaged. First step is take the test," <laughs> or do you even do it before you start writing up a proposal? 
Oh, way before. Actually, I had them take the test at our first meeting. And this is something else I changed a couple of years ago. I used to meet clients in their homes for the, our first meeting. I don't do that anymore because there's a lot of distraction in the space, even though that is what, you know, that's the matter at hand. We want to see how we can transform a space or assist in, you know, changing a space. But I found when I go in their homes, there's like phones ringing, dogs barking. Then they want to show me the basement that they're going to do in five years, but we're only here to do the bathroom. I mean, it's so many distractions. So I actually have changed my, my program and clients come to my studio and we meet in what I call, I said, we're going to have a speed date and I'm going to give you a quiz. So that's what it is, is to find out, are you comfortable with me? Do you like me? Am I comfortable with you? Do I like you? Cause I can also say I'm not interested. So they come to my studio we have, we just talk. We don't necessarily have to talk about the project. I talk about their life and, you know, their family and, and, you know, different things. And then, you know, I say, but I want to, I want to give you a test and, you know, they chuckle, what kind of test, you know, but I have not had anybody refuse, but that's how I kind of present it. And to be honest, I guess if somebody did refuse, I might think they're a little bit of a maniac. So I might say no anyway. So. <laughs> well, if you said, right. we're going to do a test, and you're like, what kind of test? And you're like, well, it's a breathalyzer. Uh, I'm sure you're not boosted. <laughs> right. Um, really, blood test. It really well. Really well. These insights have been phenomenal, and they definitely translate. You talked about uh, you're, you're accessing people's intimate space. You know, as an interior designer, their homes, as an account or bookkeeper, you're accessing their most intimate, intimate space, which is their financials, their book. Mm -hmm. So this has been very powerful. And that where can our listeners learn more about you and uh, maybe find the most amazing interior designer out there? <laughs> they can go to www.odinteriorsgroup.com. And that's where you can find me and my contact information. You can email me or give me a call and we can have a chat. And if you want a, an amazing experience, just connect. But right. you got to take the test. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yep. All right, Annette, thank you so much for joining us yes, today. Yes, thank you. Nice job. Thank Good you, job. John. Thanks. Take care. So uh, we'll have Annette's links in our show notes. You know, Jacob Adamo's test we're also going to have up there as a link, so you can check it out and download it. Definitely go on Amazon, get his book, um, and re reach out to Annette. I think there's stuff to be learned here, and who knows? Maybe we'll come out with an interior designer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. All right. Here's the deal, yo, my friends. In a moment, we are going to recap what we learned. That's the summary section. Robbie, uh, Robbie, Obi Ron Kenobi. Robbie, that's my brother. Robbie, Robbie Kenobi. Your brother. Yeah, Robbie Kenobi is going to share uh, the psychology of the sale. I got a GMAP now task. Mm. But first, oh, I want to thank Right Networks. You know, uh, Right Networks is our newest corporate partner. Mm -hmm. And if you have an accounting system, a desktop-based accounting system that your clients love. How long have you been trying to dial in, remote connect, all that stuff? It's, it's a disaster, right? Maybe try to move to your offices so you can manage it. Now, they can't connect. Right Networks puts any app, any of those ancient but powerful apps you want on the web hmm. instantly. So you can become a web-based, in-the-cloud accounting provider instantaneously with Right Networks. Wow. You awesome. Want, you want to pick one? Yeah. Receipt Bank. Oh! The ultimate, ultimate productivity saving app that's already in the cloud. Uh, and it's not just for receipt capture, which is great, but just the way you'll be able to share with your customers this fine tool that will make their lives a lot easier. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of functionality in what you can scan, capture, store, and link automatically. Mm -hmm. Next, Eva, voice over IP phone system. I shouldn't say a voice over IP phone system. It's the voice over IP phone system. They're the best. We've been using them in-house ever since the inception of our business and well before. And your clients may want to use them too, or you. Why not get a high-end phone system at a low-end cost? And you know what? It was funny. When we were doing our global calls, the yeah. uh, the phones all dropped. It yeah. wasn't the phones. No, it was the... The, uh, the internet. Yeah, it wasn't even the internet. It was um, the Power. provider of our phone conferencing, which is actually not Nextiva. Right. It's an online app. The app basically shorted out. Unbelievable. We had to do a reset. Yeah. But, but next Eva, plug right through. Awesome. And let's not forget the ultimate cash flow accelerator bundle oh box. Oh, my God, Ron. Tell me about it. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, it, it, maybe you're waiting on some receivables from your customers. Maybe they're out a little late and you might be short of making payroll. Reach out to Funbox. They'll accelerate that cash, get that into your pocket so you can make payroll, and you're still going to be following up with 
your those people that you need the money from. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the fun box reps calling. Where's my money? Where's my money? <laughs> Actually, they don't do that. No, they don't. No, they don't. They don't touch your clients. They don't call your clients. They no. don't invoice your clients at all. Which is truly is They're true the and is the best part. Mm-hmm. All right, Ron. Um, why don't we go into what we learned just now? Yeah. I- for- a lot, a lot. And, and really, I, when you first proposed having a net, I'm like, really? And then after you shared with me uh, prior and listening to that, it makes all the sense in the world. Because if you can understand how your customers think, you can learn more about how they operate and you can communicate better. You can persuade them. You can work with them and it's a much fruitful engagement. Yeah, it's definitely much more fruitful. Uh, I like to define the role of what you want prior to the call. And um, what you can do now, and when I say prior, I'm sorry, let me rewind. I'm thinking, uh, this is with the employees, define the role you want for your employees. So when you're doing a test with your employees, say, I need a green to do this, right? And if you get someone that's in red, you know they're not a a color match, and you have the discipline of not pursuing that. And it's great backup because, you know, I mean, sales – in hiring salespeople, hiring people in general, the interview is the honeymoon. And some people are good at faking it. Yeah, exactly. Honestly. So having this little tool here, this free tool, yeah. that will give you a quick snapshot and let you know yeah. whether or not. And I think, too, so I consider myself blue with a slight toward red. I consider you were red with a slight toward blue. And I think we naturally connect with people that are like us. So I naturally like you because of your personality. Oh, thank you. You have that. <laughs> but if you're a yellow, there might not be that natural fit. But ironically, for the role I need to may hire, may, may need to hire, may be a yellow. So it may be counterintuitive to what you feel. We both right? need greens. We definitely need greens. Yeah. Which <laughs> I think yeah. Billy Ann is a little bit green. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Green, blue. Like, she's, yeah, yeah so much what we need. Um, the other thing I learned was uh, keep the results on file. Like, when you talk with a client and you get their color, I think we say, oh, great, and now I know how to deal with them, and then we kind of ignore and then it. Then you don't use it. Yeah, we don't revisit it. You don't use it. the tool, right. So and it was the simplest thing, but Annette just flippantly says, you know, oh, I just keep it on file keep, for keep life. It, keep it on their client profile sheet. Oh, I like that, yeah. Yeah, or in their in your CRM. Yep. I Absolutely. Like I like that. And the last thing is the, the great tip I think she shared was that customers get insights on themselves, so they're anticipating – uh, they're going to get results of something that will give them insights on themselves, and therefore they want to do it. Because you asked, does everyone do it? And she said, yeah. And the reason is, I think, because they're getting insights on themselves. Can you imagine you and Krista going to um, you know, Keith and Keith saying, hey, I'd like you guys to take this test. You guys would have a fun time doing it. Oh, my God. I'd love to. Right? I got, dude, I got to tell you, just real quick. Me and Krista did a – we went to a marriage counselor, but not a marriage counselor um, like that's practicing – but one who was practicing to become a marriage counselor. Really? When we, yeah, we went to Hawaii where her father lives. He teaches marriage counselors. So they put us in a room and they said, would you be willing? This is the guy that's been on five marriages himself? No, 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 no. no. Oh, Sorry, okay. No, no. Sorry. Well, yeah. yeah. No, not him. <laughs> He's a marriage counselor uh, and a psychologist. So he teaches marriage counselors. He brought us in a room. There's actually three people that interviewed us. Uh, and they went through this stuff. At the end, we had to give critical feedback. And they were like all shaken up. They're like, oh, you can't give me critical feedback. It was the most bizarre thing in the world. We gave critical feedback to students who were seeking critical feedback and then were offended in defending what feedback they were getting. And it wasn't even like it wasn't even like bad stuff. Right. It's just, hey, when you said this, let me tell you the thoughts that are going through my mind that maybe wasn't what you wanted. And you're like, Ugh. <laughs> So I actually the marriage counselors complained about me and Krista. It was hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> in Hawaii. I don't think they're going to be very good. Yeah, I hope they're not the listening to us. I, yeah, I hope they get over that. Right. And take some criticism. Yeah. Um, okay, that was a total divergence. Yeah. I want the most important thing of the day, and this is what it is. It's the psychology of the sale. Oh, oh, absolutely. And what we're going to talk about today is the conformance principle. Basically, we are driven to conform to rules. So, you know, th- this rule, we follow rules, okay? But here's the problem. Not everybody does all the time. Workflow rules. Sometimes staff mm. breaks them for any number of reasons, mm. right? As, so, as well as there's rules in social groups. There's rules in so, norms, company rules, club rules, national laws, all sorts of different rules. Some may be written, some may not. But knowing this, knowing that people conform to rules, what can you do for your accounting practice? Well, you can use this principle by either directing people to follow the rules that you set or by taking control of the rules themselves, having them have input into what these rules are that suit your purpose. 
So in essence, what you want to do is, is take a look at some of your workflow rules, your systems, your processes. Meet with your team. Empower them. What rules are currently working? Which ones are no longer relevant? Empower your team to work to determine and create the rules that suit your company's needs. Mm. 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 Not quite a boom, though, huh? Just an mm. no. You you don't you know we we needed a sound effect for to end yours because we always kick into a different sound effect right out of yours. I don't know if it's really fair because it's such a good one. <laughs> it's yeah. so good. Forget about oh. me. Forget about Obi. Oh. Get right into the cheap app. Do it now, Task. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Whenever we argue, Mike, yeah. and whenever we're button heads, yeah. we, we just got to say, you know what? Time out and play this. <laughs> we should, we do should. That. Next time we get into a dispute. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> that, that, well, sorry, it dancing. does. It, put, it both puts smiles on our face. It does. It does. It's the best song ever. Um, Give it to us. It's real simple. And we already said how to do it. I mean, it, it's, it's just two words or three words. Do... <laughs> It's four words. The test now. That's it. Test yourself. That's the big mistake. We see these opportunities to improve our clients, to learn more on them, learn about more about our employees, and we forget ourselves. So here's the deal. The simplest GMAP now task ever. Just go to the link. It's in the show notes. And take the test for yourself now. Mm -hmm. Once you believe and you see what it does for you, what you, the insights you get for yourself, then you'll know the insights you can get for your clients. Awesome. Um, all right. Who do you think is going to be is the most well-rounded person, color person in our company? Who do you think is going to get it? Most well-rounded color. Oh, you're going to have all the colors. Hmm, that's a good one. I got to think about. It. I want to say maybe Scalise. <laughs> right. Right. Maybe Scalise. Right. Right. Yeah. Because you don't know what's ever coming. Like you, you just do not know what's coming from the Hawaiian lumberjack. And don't forget, oh, Billy Ander, new nickname, B. A. Baracus. I am liking that. She pities the fool that doesn't implement proper first. first in their business. Mm. I like you know it's growing on me. I, at first, I'm like I don't know. I liking it more and more every single day. Well, talking about liking it more, we gotta go see Billy Ann. She's waiting outside mm -hmm. for us to talk to talk with her. So let's get out of here, Ron. Yep, thank you very much. And of course, I want to thank you listeners for joining us today. You can review us on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn Radio. We would love to get your five-star ratings, but your feedback is most important. Yeah, the feedback is what we want. And listen, if it's a five-star feedback, we'll take it. If it's a four-star, we'll star we'll take it. If it's a one-star, we'll take it. But we're we're blues and red, so we'll be in pain. <laughs> but we'll take it. Be honest. We want to get your feedback. Um, here's the deal. ProfitCon is right around the corner. It's in less, I think it's about 14 days or so, 20 days out. I think about 20 days out. So you can still get your ticket. Go to ProfitCon.us. If you're an accountant or bookkeeper or coach, if you care about driving profitability for clients, you got to be at the only conference in the world dedicated to profitability. That's ProfitCon. Dot US. Go there now, get your ticket. By the way, you can get it for $7.99. That is a discount off of a thousand buck ticket. So get it now. It's well worth the investment. And go to ProfitFirstProfessionals.com because we are looking for the most elite providers out there. I'm not saying that you are charging the most of your clients. I'm not saying you're the biggest accounting or bookkeeping firm. What I'm saying is the most elite I mean you care about your customers more than the competitors. Passion. If you do, if you're more passionate than about your clients than your competitors, we want to talk with you because we have a tool of the century. It's called Profit First, and we can drive profitability in your clients' businesses. And if you care about them, that's what you'll do. So go to ProfitFirstProfessionals.com right now, click on Become, fill out the form, and we'll start the conversation. Awesome. Okay. All right, Ron. I'll see you next week. All right. Later. See ya. Over and out.